volts of three, which gives us pressure switch stuck open, if you can see that. So that's good, we have a code. And the pressure switch is stuck open, this guy. Good deal. So right now, we'll just do a quick continuity test just to see what it's doing now. Okay, that's good. It's open. Let's check the tube. Seems fine. Let's see if I can look inside that port right here. Oh, looks looks clear. Good. Take this. my lead up Zach jeez that doesn't fit in there um, look what someone left behind this might work just to make sure yeah it's definitely clear well, that's interesting So that's clear. JC was out here a couple days ago with a no heat call, but the customer had reset the unit, so he didn't he couldn't see a code. And he fired it up multiple times, checked everything, everything was running smooth. So I think we're having an intermittent problem with that pressure switch going bad. So should be able to swap it out but I will say why did the inducer just kick on all, all of a sudden it's still flashing a three code I'm wondering if the inducer was not actually kicking on it has nothing to do with the, with the pressure switch as well but it's hard if, if I don't catch it in the act how do I know if it's the inducer motor or the pressure switch it's a hard call. You know what I'm saying? 0.75. It's rated for 1.2. So. That's a damper. That's a damper. Is this also, is that a bypass damper? No. It's another damper. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, there's four dampers. <laughs> That's crazy. are just randomly turned on. So we actually have a code of one, two, three. And I just showed that switch was closed. So we need to see what's going on here. So I just pushed in on this Molex plug. And then the code went away. And now it's about to fire up. <clears throat> oh. 
that's our problem right there. See if it looks like there is some damage right through here. Some corrosion. Make sure it's the same board. Looks good. does. This was an ongoing situation. Uh, JC, my technician, came out here, I want to say it was yesterday or the day before, and um, I think I said it earlier, but obviously there was a problem. It wasn't heating, but the customer had cycled the power to the furnace and got it running again. Obviously that reset the, the fault. So when he got here, it was running. It was satisfied and there was no faults. <clears throat> so he just tested it over and over and over, multiple times. Um, it is a zone system, so I had him close down one zone and verify temperature rise, you know, was in within spec, uh, and then, you know, open that one and then close the other zone and so on, just to verify that, you know, it wasn't like an airflow problem that was kind of uh, intermitting, or if it was like a zone, uh, it was a zone damper situation so anyway he went through all that cycled it multiple times found nothing wrong so um, 
anyway. And then she calls this morning saying that it's not heating again. So I said, don't touch it. Uh, let me come out there and see what's going on. So thankfully that's what she did. And it was showing a code uh, pressure switch stuck open. And I tested it multiple times. The switch was closing and opening properly. And then I started messing with that Molex plug on the circuit board while it was running. And as you could tell in the video, it was shutting on and off. Like you could, you could, uh, you could definitely tell there was some type of loose connection uh, on the circuit board itself. I made sure it wasn't the plug where the wires go into. All that looks solid, but just wiggling it, boom, it was cutting on and off, going crazy. So that told me that the board just had some. Uh, weak connection on the circuitry on the backside and then of course when I removed it there was some corrosion some and it looked like there were some bad connections there so um, anyway I put the new board in did the whole wiggle test and didn't it never shut off so I feel very confident that we got the problem fixed I went ahead and you know brought or bought a pressure switch just in case uh, I mean it's good to have these on the van anyway um, but I did not install it, so I just kept it on the van. Um, anyway, I think um, I feel good about it. I think the customer is going to be, you know, doing just fine. And uh, pretty much it for this video. Really hope you guys got something out of the process and the troubleshooting process. I uh, really appreciate you being here watching these videos. Give a like if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. See you next time. Woo!